Hi everyone. Welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast episode 12. My name is Hannah and I can be found as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. And there is a blog for this podcast that has show notes and that is rosehipknitspodcast.blogspot.com. Welcome everyone. Welcome to anyone who's new and to all of those um, of you who have been watching since previous episodes. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit funny today. I've had a horrible, horrible cough. I've been waking up 4 a.m., 5 a.m., not being able to go back to sleep for the last few nights. And um, yes, still coughing every now and then. So if there's some funny editing going on, it's probably because I'm stopping to cough and then um, start recording again. Anyway, I feel okay. I'm very happy to be here to talk to you today about some knitting and crocheting and dyeing and some other fun things. So thank you to all of the subscribers, any new subscribers, thank you very much. And to all of the comments and PMs that I have been receiving, it's always, always so much fun to get feedback and to just get little hellos and sweet uh, messages. So thank you to everyone and please continue to um, send me messages and let me know what you think about the episodes and if you have any questions of course just let me know. The Ravelry group is going strong, you can find it um, just by searching Rose Hip Knits Podcast on Ravelry. There's over 60 members now and there's um, a bit of activity in the travel along threads. So we do have a travel along happening in the group and there's small details about that in the group. There's a thread for just, um, well, all the threads are fine to just um, put any comments and chatter in there because I'll I'll do the old style uh, method of drawing a winner. So there'll be one winner for works in progress and this is for travel knitting, crocheting, spinning, any crafting, you just take a photo of anything you're crafting on when you're out and about, any sort of traveling or just being on the move. So basically not being at home. <laughs> and um, there's one thread of works in progress as I said, just take a photo when you're out of your knitting or anything you're working on and let me know what it is and where you are and just post that in the thread on Ravelry and there's also a thread for finished objects so if you have finished anything before the end of July that you have been working on partly when you were out and about you just post a photo of the finished item and also a photo of when it was out and um, there's just some details just it's so much fun to see what people work on when they're out and um, it's, so far there's everything from socks, which is what I normally work on when I'm out. But a Hijifuri cardigan in a Japanese garden is pretty amazing, I think, to work on when you're out. So yes, please continue to post your projects and join in the travel along we're having. I have received the um, prizes that were donated and I am actually just going to grab them and then I'll come back and show them to you. So the prizes, I quickly grabbed them and they were just a little bit further away. So the first prize donation that I received in the post was from um, Ashley in Adelaide and I'm sorry Ashley I can't remember your rivalry name. I, I will um, mention this again and then I'll let you know. Because I'm so thankful to Ashley that she um, is just happy as a viewer to um, donate a prize for this travel along. And she said to me, um, a first along for a podcast um, should have some special item as a prize. So she thought that a skein of wool mice 
would be suitable. So this is a wool mice DK, 100% wool in the uh, fuchsia colorway. So this is 100 grams and it's 214 meters. So that is just amazing. That's a beautiful prize. And um, Ashley was so sweet and she sent a skein for me as well. <laughs> she said it's, it's a real Hannah colour and as you can see it definitely is. So whoever wins um, this game can be twin sis with me and we can knit something similar. So thank you. Amazing. It's, um, it's amazing. Isn't that a wonderful prize? And then um, Andy of the Andre, Andre Sue Knits podcast sent um, some stitch markers for the, um, the giveaway for the travel along drawing. And um, she said to me, oh, I'd like to send some stitch markers as a prize donation. And, uh, but I'd also like to send a stitch marker set for you. So just let me know what you like. Well, she didn't actually say that she was going to send one to me. She just said, um, I'll send a set for the price. Let me know which ones you like. And there were so many beautiful um, stitch markers on her Etsy store. So I said, oh, I like, I said a few different ones that I really liked. And I said, but you choose because I'm happy um, with any of them. And she said, okay, well, I chose um, the unicorns and the sea turtles for you. And you can have one as a prize and keep one for yourself. So I'll, sh I'll show you. It came in beautifully boxes, but I unwrapped them just to be able to show you. So there are the little unicorns. And there's also a set, sorry, with sea turtles. And you can't really see them very well through the plastic bag, but I won't um, take them out uh, this time. I might do that uh, later on in a episode closer to the end of the cow. So she sent those, but that wasn't enough. But I'll, I'll show you later in, in this episode what else and Andy sent to me. It was another wonderful mail day <laughs> the other day. Um. So that's the travel along and yes, fantastic prices and I will also add to the prices. I'm just not sure what I'll add yet. I'll be doing some, um, I'll be visiting some different places in July and that's why I have this travel along because I'll be out and about and um, knitting um, going to and from places. So I'll, I'll keep an eye out for some interesting things that I can add to the prices and I haven't decided yet which price will be for the works in progress and which one will be for the finished objects I'll just see what else will um, be added to those prices and um, I have another thank you but that will sort of um, fit in with when I show you what I'm working on so I will start with finished objects. Okay, things that I have finished since last time I talked to you. First, something that was almost finished last time is the Autumn Morning Charlotte by Holly Dapp of the Sweet Snips podcast. Um, I have not blocked it yet. It's nice and squishy and soft and it's rather big. <laughs> And um, I used the Bendigo Wooler Mills Athena, which was a limited um, edition um, of a base that's a wool, silk and bamboo. It's a four ply and um, the variegated or multicolored one is one that I dyed. And the other one is the color that they call ivory, which is just this green colour. 
so that's all finished and I love it. The other thing that I finished finally and I have been talking about this project since I started this podcast and it's the blanket. Yes, I finished this blanket. This is a mitred square blanket that I started on probably in 2008. It all started when I worked in a wool shop down in Hobart, um, down in the Salamanca area, and um, I bought a skein of yarn, and it was this one, because I just loved the colours, and it was so crazy and fun, and it's, it's a, a DK weight, and it's a New Zealand wool that was hand dyed, and I can't remember the details, but it's all on the Ravelry project page. So I had that and I just did not know what to make from it. So I made these squares. So I started making them. I just did them one by one. I didn't join them as I went. And I made a few of those. And I had a stack of maybe 12 or so. And they were just sitting there for years. Because I, there were not quite enough squares to make a big enough blanket and I was not that keen on joining them together. I tried a couple of times um, with knitting around them in different colour or crocheting around them and it just didn't work out. And then my mother-in-law gave me some solid skeins of um, like a blue and a the orange but she also gave me a few other colours that I didn't use for this blanket. She gave those to me that she received as samples and they're from um, Australian Woolen Mills, I think it's called. They were just samples of Australian wool. Um, I think it's called uh, Country H Ply or something like that. You can buy it in Spotlight, I'm pretty sure. But I had two skeins, each of the blue and the orange, and I thought I'll see how many squares I can get out of that and see if, if they will work well in a blanket with the multicolored. So I did that and uh, is it sewing thread? I had all the squares and I had to make one square like this because I was totally out of the multicolored and then totally out of the blue so I had to put a bit of grey there, totally out of the orange so I had to use grey on that one as well. So I definitely used everything I had, no scraps left which is great. And I found the, um, the grey, um, just, it's just a Spotlight brand DK weight, 100% wool. And I used two skeins of that to crochet around, like a double crochet around every square. And then another skein I used, a third skein I used to crochet them all together and one round around the whole blanket. So I told you last time that I had all the squares up on the table here and um, what I had to do with the blanket at that stage was to crochet together all of the squares. So when I came in here to grab something or I had um, my daughters in here doing some painting or playing or at night if I was out here dying or doing something, I just um, crochet one or two squares together and um, when I had half of it done I was sort of um, on, on the, oh, I was just sort of into it and I just wanted to keep going so I brought it inside and one night I um, crocheted all of them together and then with this cough that I've been having and not being able to sleep one morning when I was up at 4am and just could not sleep. I was just coughing and miserable. I um, crocheted around the blanket and I had it done that morning. And uh, yes, I I know I said that I would have it finished by the end of June and I, I did just. But even if I said it, I did not think it would happen because um, I have tried to finish this blanket so many times. But it's it's done now. So it's, um, it's all DK weight. And it's, what is it, one, two, three, four, five by six squares. So there's 30 squares in the blanket. And um, I'm planning to um, 
give that to a friend and her little baby boy that um, is going to be six months in a couple of weeks and I have still not seen him so I'll have a gift when I, I see them. So that's what I finished and that's pretty much what I've been working on since the last podcast. Um, yes, I put all my effort into those two items to have them finished. Because with the shawl, I wanted to enter it into a few cows. And that's why I decided to make it stripy as well. Because Holly's original pattern and her original shawl, they're just a solid colour for the body and a solid colour for the border or a tonal maybe, um, but the um, Cozy Crafting podcast and the Foxes in Socks podcast, they are hosting a striped shawl cow and I wanted to join that and um, there was also the Heat Your Neck cow for the Foxes in Socks and the Skein Yarn podcast, they um have a hand dyed shawl knit along at the moment so doing it like this I could join all of those cows and I think it was the foxes and socks heat your neck cow that ended in end of June so I decided to have that done by then and I did and uh, yes I just told myself I wanted a blanket done by the end of June so Yay, I did it. And I'm very happy with those two. And I have a few works in progress. Not very much. I haven't worked a lot of them on them. Sorry. But um, I will just show you quickly. Okay. I'm sorry about all the interruptions um, that there's been so far in this episode. Um, I could, I kept hearing my daughter waking up outside. and But she was fine. So I kept recording. But now she's up and she's joining us again. Just next to me. So we'll see how we go. Um, I can feel my throat is um, starting to be a bit irritated. I'm drinking a new tea to me. Um, just in a supermarket yesterday, they had a green tea with coconut. And it's really really nice. And the reason I bought it and I, thought, um, I should try that is because um, I saw someone drinking it on a podcast. And I think it was Nina. Um of um, Fussy Knots podcast, I think the podcast is called. It's in, huh? she, she's in Santiago in Chile, I think. And uh, yes, I think she once recommended a coconut tea and I, I wanted to try it. And it is really nice. And it's been good with the green tea for me now that <clears throat> I've had a bit of a cough. Uh, okay, well, we better keep going because the little one is here and she's... So far happy with some dry cornflakes, but I don't know for how long that will last. So let's move on to works in progress. Um, I received this bag this week from Holly of the Swift Knits podcast. This um, was a prize that I won from a drawing from doing the um, Follow Yellow Brick Road shawl that Holly designed and she had an Instagram competition or knit along for that and I was the lucky winner of this bag and I love it it's a very sort of holiday and beachy feeling to this bag which will be perfect for me um, in July as so I'll be venturing off on some adventures um, it's Holly's nice card I'm very impressed Holly <laughs> And she sent me some tea, and oh, I'm so curious about the cocoa and chili one. I have to try that <clears throat> very soon. And in this bag, I now have my sock, which is my travel project. And I thought it would be very fitting to put my travel knitting in this sort of holiday themed bag. And um, Yes, this is my hand dyed. It's a pattern nail, Peyton's pattern nail four ply, I think it's called. It's a wool nylon. Oops, there it goes. And um, I dyed this myself a few years ago. 
and I wasn't sure about the colours, but now that I'm knitting them up, I really love them. I did a twisted rib and then just 56 stitches on my little 9 inch circular Chiago, Chiago needle. So um, this will be my project that I take along in the next few weeks and um, for anywhere that I go. And I, it was a good thing to move it into a little bit of a bigger bag. I quite like to have even the smaller projects in a bigger bag when I'm out and about because then I can add any other things to it and um, I can have a, a set of extra needles if I visit a, a yarn shop and I might buy some souvenir yarn and cast something on straight away if I have an extra pair of needles. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yes, I love the bag Holly. And I'd like to know who made the bag. I, I can't remember. I know you, you said um, when you had the um, Instagram knit along. But I can't remember. So I, I have to ask you who made the bag. And I'll let you all know. <coughs> oh, Sorry. So that's the sock that I'm working on. haven't worked on it a lot. I think I've added one or two stripes when I've been waiting for the kettle to boil. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'll make this quick. And then I have my secret test knit for Maria of the Stitch in Sweden podcast. And I just wanted to show this bag. This is a bag <coughs> that I I received um, when I I joined a dye along for um, the Dyer's Notebook podcast with Laura and Jing Xian. She hosted a um, dialogue over a year ago now, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. And I was the lucky winner of this bag. And this is a bag made by Chasing Acorns on Etsy. And it's a, a beautiful, well-made bag. Um, with this sort of shiny uh, lining and that's perfect for socks or a smaller project so I have my secret project in there so I'll just tease you with showing you the bag <coughs> okay and then my other work in progress that you've seen several times I have now moved into my bag that Erin of the Holland Handmade podcast made for me it's a great bag for <coughs> storing a few things in so I did the same with this bag that in case I take this with me out if I go somewhere I have a bit of extra space in there <coughs> I'm so sorry there was a bit of a, a coughing fit there and I also had to go and refill the cornflakes container <laughs> so I'm back and I I talked about the socks and then I was on to <coughs> my raindrops top that I think I've only put one or two rows um, on too so I have not really touched it because I was busy doing those other things but it is in the beautiful bag from Erin of Holland Handmade and um, yes it's a nice big bag and I can put a few extra bits and pieces in there I also have my Chasing Acorns tape measure in there <coughs> So, there's two works in progress that I can actually show you, and, uh, sorry, and um, one that I am not able to show you just yet, and then I have just started to, in my little bag that I made, out of my hand spun, and I have talked about this several times, that I was going to use this hand spun that I have quite a lot of, and I wanted to make a cardigan. And I thought I'll start swatching and after that we'll see if I can find a pattern that um, will work out. So at the moment I'm swatching on a three millimeter needle and it's a very soft, it's a Tasmanian mer um, merino and it's a top that I dyed and then spun. So 
I think I, I quite like it on a three millimeter needle and I'll um, just have to see I'll, I'll do a little bit more and then I'll measure it up maybe wash it and be good <clears throat> do that wash it and then measure and see if I can find a pattern that's suitable for the amount I have and the gauge that I will get so that's um, those things and actually when I I decided um, that I wanted to show off some baby knits that I have made uh, five years ago when my first daughter was born and in the past year or 18 months since my second daughter was born um, because I thought about it um, a while back I thought I have all these nice baby knits and toddler knits and I'm sure there's someone out there who's be interesting to know the patterns that I like and that I recommend and um, which baby knits have been used a lot <clears throat> another just um, information that I can share with you about those and then I saw um, our oh, Molly of um, the homespun house. She showed her like most used baby knits for her little baby um, just recently when she had her newborn. And then um, I watched an old episode of Shabby Pug Yarn, which is a, a podcast, a Swedish podcast in English that I have recently discovered and I really love. I am. Um, I watched a, a, one of her episodes when she was showing off a whole lot of baby knits that she's been making. And when I was, um, I wanted to, sorry, this story is just going crazy. I wanted to have a look through my baby knits that I have stored away to see if there's anything that I would like to show you and talk about a little bit. And um, I am going to do that. It won't happen today. It will be when I have a bit more time. And... Um, when I was looking through um, the knits, I found these mittens that I made a few years back and I never finished them because, and these are made out of a, um, I think it's a heirloom baby merino or some, something like that, or baby wool, four ply. Um, when I made them, the thumb is just so tight and the actual mitten is really loose. So I think that I will take out the thumbs. It's okay. I'm coming to open the door. Yes. Door. I'll, yes, door. I'll take the thumbs out and re-knit them. And then I think they'll actually qualify for stash dash. So that's another thing I have on. I'm sorry. I'm just going to go and open the door. I'm so sorry. This episode is absolutely crazy. We'll see if it even makes it up to YouTube. I'm not sure at this point. Anyway, I'll keep going. You never know. It might be okay. So, I'm very excited to have finished those two items that I showed you in the start. They actually get me just across the 3K line for the Stash Dash um, 2015. So, I have reached the 3,000 meter level so I can enter Stash Dash. So, I'm very happy about that and I think that anything... Um, more now until the end of Stash Dash will just be a bonus and if I make the 5k I'm really happy but if I don't I'm still very happy because I completed my blanket and that's all the reward that I need. So now what I wanted to do was to show you the package that Andy sent me and this was just a huge surprise because she said she'd send me two sets of stitch markers um, that I showed you before and um, she sent a bit more than that so she sent me a beautiful card and she said that um, she sent the stitch markers but she also um, put a few extra goodies in there for me <laughs> so, I haven't unwrapped them because it's so beautifully wrapped so she sent me this game she calls it kiss and tell uh, the Cloud Nine fingering weight yarn, so it's seventy-five percent superwash and twenty-five percent nylon, four hundred and sixty yards, hundred grams. And I'm sorry, I have it still in the package, but isn't that just beautiful? I just have never seen anything as amazing. 
Thank you, Andy. And she also sent me some mini skeins. And I have seen her show these on her podcast, and they're just beautiful. And um, these are 80% superwash merino and tw 20 nylon, and they're about 25 yards each. And um, I'm not making a cozy memories blanket or hexi puff or any of those things. And I think after completing my blanket, that just took me so long. I can't see myself making another blanket or a blanket, especially not a fingering weight blanket. So uh, I'll have to think of some other little thing that I can do with this. But I love them. They're beautiful. It's so much fun to see other indie dyes um, hand dyes and see the yarns um, because every every dye is just the results they get are all so different. It's wonderful. And you also sent this fun little keychain sock blocker sock. So it has a little keychain sock blocker and a pattern for making the sock for it. So much fun. It's great. And she also sends a little sticky. That's for the sheepy. And I think for alpacas. So okay. yes. So isn't that a great package? That's and Andy's um, card, andreasunits.etsy.com. Thank you, Andy. So um, that was just amazing mail. Um, I have received so much, and it's been such a surprise every time. I can't believe it. Um, I'm so happy there's been donations for their travel along, and I. I promise you I will add something amazing too. So I think my daughter wants me to play with her. She needs a bit of attention after her sleep. So um, as you can see I have been doing some self-striping. I've been dyeing up my last skeins for this market that I'm doing with my mum. So I had some um, sock yarn, some wool nylon yarn left to dye up and I did a few of them self-striping and other ones. This is another one I did. This is my little <laughs> pile of hand dye. So this is another one of the wool nylon ones that I dyed up. I'm going to take the lid off the yogurt. Um, Yes, um, I don't know that I'll say much about the self striping. It's um, I might show you um, at another point when I have them all balled up and everything, or scanned up. Um, I've just put them up on the warping board now until to make sure that they're really dry before I scan them up or do anything with them. So there's two skeins up there, and I have another one. Um, that I'm about to put in the steamer now when we leave the studio. So I think that's all for this time. And I'm sorry if you if you didn't um, quite make it to the end of this episode because it was just a bit crazy and a lot of interruptions. Uh, I hope to be able to talk to you all again very soon. I'll see how much uh, knitting and other things I'll get done in the next few weeks. Um, but I will be back to talk to you. And please contact me on Ravelry or Instagram. And um, yes. <coughs> Are you saying hello? Yeah. Okay, we'll better go and play. So take care, everyone. And I'll see you next time. Bye.